and storms that blow, waiting patiently. No secrets held in an open heart, a spirit that soars over. Good evening. It is good to be gathered with you at five tonight. I welcome you to worship and I, and I encourage you to claim your sacred space in your home by lighting a candle and creating some worshipful surroundings so that you might feel connected in the body of Christ tonight wherever you are. I have just um, a few things to say before we get going in earnest tonight in our worship. Um, I will be co-preaching by video tonight with Ashley Jensen, who is one of our Gathered at Five worshipers. She will introduce herself later in the sermon, but for the next four weeks, we, I, will be co-preaching with four Gathered at Five uh, worshipers. And we will be preaching through Luke chapter 6, which is a wonderful chapter at the beginning of Jesus' public ministry, where he's picking up the disciples along the road. And we will be exploring this theme, Learning on the Way, which seemed like the perfect uh, theme to explore this historic moment we are in, both because of the pandemic and also because of the racial injustice finally coming to light and with a sense of urgency in this 
historic moments. So we invite you to join us for these four weeks as we explore learning on the way. Just a few announcements. During the offering tonight, you can give via the app Tithely on your smartphones or at the Give button on your live stream pages or at the top of Westminster's homepage. If you are visiting with us tonight, we welcome you especially and don't hesitate to reach out to me or any of the other pastors. You can find my email uh, on the screen at the moment. We do have worship in the morning on Sundays at 10.30, and education hour at 9.15 precedes that worship service. We also have worship on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock, fire and song. We have education also on Mondays at noon, um, led by Matt Skinner this summer, and I teach a Bible study at 9.30 in the morning on Wednesdays on Facebook Live. So please plug in to any of those um, to any of those offerings during the course of the week. Please follow us on social media, and you can still RSVP for the July book read that, that is happening on Wednesday evenings at seven o'clock. We're reading I'm Still Here, Black, Di Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Channing Brown, and you can contact me for more details about that. Next Saturday, you can pick up your yard sign, No Justice, No Peace, with Westminster's logo on the bottom. This, these four words come from verses in the books of the prophets in Scripture that call upon us to realize that there can never be peace until there is justice for all. And so we invite you to come next Saturday between 10 and noon and pick up your yard sign. And all the, the do donations that we receive for those signs will go to the interface relief fund that goes towards efforts um, for folks affected by the pandemic and now this uh, this uh, resurgence in racial justice work in our city. Finally, tonight at Gathered at Five, we are celebrating the Lord's Supper, communion, for the first time since, I believe, March 8th. Uh, it was our last time that we gathered and celebrated communion. So get whatever you have in your house right now. Run, go get it. Get some crackers or bread, some juice or, you know, whatever you have. And please join us in communion tonight. We believe that we are joined by the Spirit in um, the Lord's Supper. And so you can participate in that way. And now, friends, as we move into this deeper time of worship, I invite you to join us in, in voice and in heart for our gathering words. Please join us. God, we come to you for nourishment, for, for a the source of life that, that is real and true, for refreshment from a painful world, for a reminder of our gifts. For the chance to lay down our burdens. For moments of joy amidst tears. For cleansing breath of your spirit. For moments to doubt and question. For ways to see a future filled with hope. For an hour to think about anything but ourselves. For the awe we find in you for the opportunity to say thank you. We dream a world 
of justice and kindness, we build a bridge, creating new paths. We march with joy as all walk together, embracing each one. We boldly stand, embracing. Indeed, we walk, we cry, and we dream for a world that God intends for us, and we do fall short. So please join me in the word of confessions. You know, we confess. God, we are listening for your promises. We look, we look to, to the, the day, day when justice, justice will come, and shame, crying, and hurt will be no more. But that day is not yet here, because we continue to hurt each other in small ways, in systemic ways. We take, we take more than we need, while others are left with none. We seek safety when necessary paths become rough. And, and forget that some are never safe. Open us to the tenderness of your mercy. Make, Make space in our lives for learning and unlearning. Encourage us to be brave and reassure us of your grace in all things. We pray, forgive, forgive us, us, O God. God.
God, who is full of grace, you know what we bring to you. You understand our deep wells of pain. You seek our lack of understanding. And yet in your unending love for us, every part of us, you forgive and offer abundance of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. We, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Amen. Amen. Friends, hear this reading from Luke chapter 6. The first section is about Sabbath, and Jesus is challenging old systems. He's telling his disciples that the Pharisees are missing the forest for the trees, that they are, they are uh, keeping the commandments in place just for the sake of keeping them and not realizing what they mean anymore. And so hear these words from Luke chapter 6. One Sabbath, as Jesus was going through the wheat fields, his disciples were picking the heads of wheat, rubbing them in their hands and eating them. Some Pharisees said, why are you breaking the Sabbath law? Jesus replied, Haven't you read what David and his companions did when they were hungry? He broke the law by going into God's house and eating the bread of the presence, which only the priests can eat. He also gave some of the bread to his companions. Then he said to them, The human one is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, Jesus entered a synagogue to teach. A man was there whose right hand was withered. The legal experts and the Pharisees were watching him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. They were looking for a reason to bring charges against him. Jesus knew their thoughts, so he said to the man with the withered hand, Get up and stand in front of everyone. He got up and stood there. Jesus said to the legal experts and Pharisees, Here's a question for you. Is it legal on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? Looking around at them all, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. So he did, and his hand was made healthy. But they were furious and began talking with each other about what to do to Jesus. Hi, Ashley. Welcome to this time of um, conversation and, uh, you know, as we are learning on the way and as we reflect on Luke chapter six together, um, I'm excited to have you and be in conversation with you. So would you start out just by introducing yourself to, to the Gathered at Five community? Yeah. So my name is Ashley Jensen. 
Um, I've been coming to Gathered at Five for a little over a year. Um, I am from Iowa. I grew up in Westminster Presbyterian Church down in Des Moines. Um, I currently live in St. Paul, and I teach fourth grade here in St. Paul. And can you tell us a little bit about um, the school that you teach at and um, some of your students, if you have any special stories about students, um, and how has distance learning been going for you? Yeah, the school I teach at is called John A. Johnson Elementary. Um, it's on the east side of St. Paul in the Payne and Phelan neighborhood. Um, our school is an Achievement Plus school, and so we have a lot of community partners um, just that provide different services for families because we know education is not the only need that they have. Um, our school is about 80 to 90 percent um, free and reduced lunch, and um, so it's, it's a low-income neighborhood. Um, we have about 60 percent Black students. Um, about 30% students that identify as Asian and um, a mix of the rest. Um, yeah, that's kind of the school that I work in. Uh, distance learning has been a challenge in many ways. Um, just getting, making sure students are connected and making sure families have what they need. Um, many families are still working full time and so having their kids at home has been a real challenge. Um, as they go off to work still. Um, but in some ways, it's also been really cool that I've, um, you know, every teacher wants more individual one on one time with their students. And so um, there's been a few students that I've been able to like have that like 30 minutes of one on one time every day. And I've been able to get to know them a little bit more. So um, it has its benefits and challenges. And you said to me yesterday that um, even though your your school is mostly students of color, the almost all the teachers are white. Is that right? Yes. Oh, um, almost all of the classroom teachers are white females, um, and then some of the paraprofessional staff um, are people of color. But um, yeah, for the most part, the power dynamic between teachers and students is along racial lines. Okay. Well, I just so appreciate you being willing to share with us about your vocation and, you know, as we explore this theme of learning on the way and what we are learning as people of faith and sometimes even unlearning um, as people of faith in the midst of this pandemic and this sort of uh, this historical moment of reckoning with racial injustice. I really appreciate your voice in in this moment. And so we have we have read Luke um, chapter six, those first few verses about Sabbath, and and you and I just talked about leading up to that chapter. Um, Jesus has sort of been picking up his disciples along the way. Um, he's sort of saying, "Hey, come and follow me. Um, come and learn along with me." And um, at the very end of Luke chapter five, Jesus basically tells them you know, you don't put, uh, you don't put new wine in old wine skins, basically like, you know, I'm about to do a new thing and we are rejecting, um, a lot of the old paradigms and the old systems. And so I just think it's this really interesting pivot Jesus takes where he starts doing things on the Sabbath and the Pharisees take notice of it, right? And they know that he is breaking the commandment and the disciples take notice as well. And then Jesus does another thing. He heals someone on the Sabbath and, and it may seem like small potatoes to us, um, but he was essentially breaking a law to make a point, right? A larger point, not only about what Sabbath is for, right? Because Sabbath is actually an issue of social justice, right? It, it's, it's about making sure everybody gets a chance to rest from work. And it's also about um, making sure that there's enough work to go around, that some people don't work too much and some people have too little good work to do. Um, so he's challenging these systems, right? And so I think 
in the middle of this pandemic and and in this moment, you're you've um, engaged a lot of systems that you've been willing to challenge. Um, what does this moment mean for you as a teacher and challenging systems? Yeah, I think, um, you know, this past year was my first year teaching and there's a lot to be said about your first year as a teacher. Um, but I think what I really appreciated about this moment is that um, with distance learning and just kind of like the pause in the school year, it's kind of given me the chance to look back and see um, the ways in which that, you know, I came into my first year of teaching with all these ideas and philosophies about teaching. Um, but the systems that are in place in the education system are so strong that I think in some ways I kind of got lost. Um, and so I think it's been, it's been really cool to um, like pause and see the ways in which I've like, with, without realizing it, just conform to the ways that the education system is harming our children of color. Um, and so I think, yeah, it's just been this time to evaluate um, and even before the murder of George Floyd, I think it was this time to evaluate what I value as a teacher and my philosophy about teaching. Um, and then more recently, I've been kind of calling it an uprising because it's um, like this reckoning moment of like everyone coming to these realizations um, and realizing that they're wrong. And so I think that's kind of given me the chance to um, think about like, there's a lot of talk about Juneteenth and the Tulsa race riots about, and it wasn't until a few years ago that I learned about that stuff. And so um, I kind of have felt that it's my responsibility as a teacher um, in a school with majority students of color. Um, it's my responsibility to educate myself on what I was not taught um, so that I'm able to stop perpetuating these systems of racism um, without even realizing it. I'm so glad that you chose this part of chapter six to focus on because we're going to preach through chapter six over the course of four weeks with different dialogue preachers and it it fits so perfectly. I mean, you have had this sort of moment of Sabbath in the pandemic to reflect on your learning and the learning that you put into the minds of, of students and especially extra vulnerable students. And you've had a chance to also reflect on the systems that exist, much like the systems that Jesus was up against, um, these powerful systems that sometimes um, seem to, that we're convinced are the only right way, and, and they're not. Um, can you talk a little bit more about um, how um, you, you're a teacher in the St. Paul Public Schools Union and sort of the union as a system and how that has maybe, um, you've been questioning some of that system, although it, it does, it helps you too, right? Right, yeah, like you were saying, we, I mean, we went on strike back in March and well, I mean, for the most part, why we went on strike was to ask for more supports for students whether that's uh, bilingual supports for families or um, like social emotional supports directly that students receive in schools. Um, and so the union does have power and uses it for good in many ways. Um, but there's also the side of how unions and the contracts that the unions create with the district, um, I think in a way over protects teachers um, and um, makes it really difficult uh, for bad teachers or not bad teachers, but teachers who are maybe knowingly, maybe unknowingly perpetuating these systemic racism, like this, the system, um, it kind of overprotects them and makes it really challenging for them to be put on an action plan or um, even removed from a school. And so I think um, it's really doing a disservice to our students uh, and, and especially in St. Paul, where uh, the majority of students in St. Paul are students of color, I think it's doing them a disservice to allow that, or to protect these teachers who are mostly white. It, it seems kind of like a vicious cycle because you'd assume that what's good for teachers would be good for students. Like teachers that feel supported, right? That you'd think that that would be a good 
stable thing for students to have, but if the if if the union is just protecting and not providing um, for the for the needs of both the teachers and the students through you know through the union, then it seems like it turns into this vicious cycle and it's backfired. Um, and also, yeah. you know, um, I can only I can only imagine um, that you worry about your students when you're you're distanced from them. And um, so I just, you know, I just wonder um, what your faith, how your faith kind of um, supports you in these in these times and you're a regular worshiper at Gathered at Five and I know you have um, a strong faith and how is your faith and, and even thinking about this one text, how has that sort of informed um, the way that you see your role as a teacher and your learning and your, and your growth? Um, I think in terms of this specific passage, um, like the Sabbath is um, kind of like God's way of freeing us from like being um, enslaved to these systems. And so it's, it's kind of um, like it's made for humans, not we aren't, we aren't made for the Sabbath. And so I think it's um, a way for us to be kind of empowered to go against these systems. And especially and like, I've kind of been thinking of the pandemic as um, shining a flashlight on all the injustices that have always been there, but maybe have been a little bit more hidden. And so I think um, just, just knowing that, and, and towards the end of Luke chapter six, um, it talks about how like, as long as your foundation is strong, um, that God will protect you. And so um, there have been moments during the pandemic and then, and before too, where um, maybe I felt that like something that I'm doing is going against the rules of the system um, or the norms of the system, but that it's the just thing to do. And, and so I think in that way, my faith has really been guiding me to become the teacher that I know is necessary. It's interesting that you say Sabbath allows us to take a step back and evaluate systems that we are enslaved to or that we, we assume are allowed to have power over us and they don't. And we need that time to be able to step back and rest and sort of go back into ourselves and into who God has called us to be. And it allows us to be able to stand up and speak truth to power in, in those moments of Sabbath. I, you know, Elena has said before, um, we really need to take our time um, with these issues because if we go too fast, we mess up, right? We make mistakes when we go too fast or when we feel um, like we haven't, haven't had enough time to rest. Um, and I th really think that that's true. It's certainly true for me. Um, I know you um, spend a lot of time outside and uh, at your cabin and, and things like that. What do you do to find Sabbath so that you can be recharged um, as a teacher? Um, I mean, yeah, yeah, I think just spending time outside um, kind of recharges me. Um, but then also just hold, like holding true to my values and my beliefs. Um, in St. Paul, the, the kind of, we use courageous conversations to have like, to kind of encourage conversations about race. Um, and so there's four quadrants. And, um, and so kind of when we start these conversations, we identify which quadrant we're in, whether it's thinking, believing, feeling, or acting. Um, and so I found that like when I'm in the believing quadrant and I'm kind of like just being in my beliefs and like what I hold true, um, that, that has been um, a source of feeling recharged and re-energized to do the important work. Um, but then also being with family and friends and being outdoors is always important too. Didn't you just run 26 miles for your 26th <laughs> birthday? I did. I did two miles at the top of the hour for 12 hours. And physically, it was a lot easier than a marathon. Mentally, it was much more difficult. 
That's so awesome. I've never even heard of somebody trying that, but actually since I heard you do that, I've heard of somebody else doing it. So, um, yeah, well, Ashley, you inspire me and it has been really a joy to think through this text with you. You've made me um, think about it in new ways. And I have such an appreciation for teachers, especially having a child now in elementary school. And I don't know if you know this, um, but one of the values of being Presbyterian is um, supporting our public schools. It's a social justice value that that we really truly believe that every child should have equal access to a good education. And I know that our systems are far from providing that for a number of reasons, but um, I give thanks that you have stuck with it and are yeah. in it for the right reasons. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for allowing me to be part of the conversation. Amen. We give thanks to God for the good words and lesson we just received. It is now time for us to respond with our offering. Let us not succumb to scarcity. The deep hurts of the world cannot define our abundance, nor replace our joy. May we, May we resist, resist the idea, idea that, there that there is, is not enough. By sharing what we have in word and in deed, in learning and growth, in, in gifts and service. Let us reorient ourselves to God and one another in our offering. Sometimes when I lay down at night, I swear that I can see to heaven for it's in dreaming that the things I always knew are the only thoughts I have and when I look up to you
the strongest sound I ever heard. Like water from a well so deep in the ground, I'll never thirst again. Oh, but it's a hard road that we follow, the saddest city. And the darkest hollows and everything that's far away and was lost from me. I see it all from here in you. Friends, hear these words of invitation to our Lord's table. Come to this table from afar, west, south, east, and north, for you are near to the heart of God. Come be together in this nourishing meal from places of loneliness and chaos, tenderness and yearning, for it is one offered by our Lord. Come, nourish yourself, eat, drink, taste of abundance and love, for it is all ready and prepared for you. Come, for all are welcome here, no matter who you are or where you reside. At God's table, you are the most welcome guest. Come to this table and remember, you are never alone. For Christ is with you and with us all. Please join your hearts with mine and let us come to this time with prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, whose love and good news transcend time and space, from the first great expansion of the universe that gave birth to the majestic cosmos to the blessings of breath on all creatures, large and small, on this known planet. Your love is destined, ordained, and promised to all, not just for some, but for all creatures, fauna and flora, bipedals and quadrupedals, fins and wings, for all, especially for your people, your, your good news, your love, your joy is for all people blessed with diverse cultures, languages, genders, sexual identities, and ethnicities. Yet broken by the constructions and segregations of race and racism, we humbly pray for your forgiveness. Forgiveness for, from those whom we have injured and seeking for your ways to truth and reconciliations. Forgive us when we fail to listen to your prophets, Douglas, Tubman, Truth, Park, Malcolm, and King. Open our ears to hear your voice through them. Open our hearts to perceive your truth through their lives. And open our hands to receive the power through their actions. Lead us by your power to challenge the system's oppressions and discriminations. May we not perpetuate systemic racism. May we hold now the higher standard to follow your radical love. May we lean and trust you to build bridges for understandings and connections with all people. Shine your light on the injustice and wrongs and bless us with the courage to be who you have made us and call us to be. And here in our community, O oh God, where your love is shared and celebrated, we pray for families who are grieving over the death of their loved ones. We pray for Minori and Michael as they grieve over the death of Minori's mother, Norna Nadaraja. We pray for Vince, Barb, Mary, Michael, and their families as they grieve over Vince's father's death. Bring comfort to their broken hearts and surround them with a love that never ends. We pray for all in our community who are seeking healing for their bodies, minds, and spirits 
do medical procedures for improvements of mobility, restorations from illness, healing from cancer, peace from trauma, and strength and stability through rehab. As we celebrate the anniversaries of the birth of our nations, may we recognize the imbalance of the promise for pursuits of happiness and liberty for all. Lead us with dissatisfied hearts that these inalienable rights are realized until for it's for all people. Help us, O oh God, to build a beloved community. And now, O oh Lord, bless the elements of this table. May the bread and the cup infuse us with courage and joy. Bless us, Lord, with the celebrations of the table for all people to come as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Blessed, Blessed one, one, holy is your name. May your law be enacted in the world. May your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in trying times and deliver us from evil. For all that we do in your love and all that your love bring forth to birth and the fullness of love that will be are yours now and forever. Amen. And we remember on the night of Jesus' betrayal, he took the bread. After giving thanks to God, he broke it and gives the disciple and says, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of new covenant, new promises, shed and sealed in my blood to forgive you and welcome you home. He gave the bread and the cup to all the disciples gathered, even the ones who would betray him. And he said, every time you eat this meal, wherever you are, do it remembering me. And so friends, every time we do eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim that Jesus died a saving death for each one of us. And we eat and drink until he comes again. Friends, siblings in Christ, these are the gifts of God for us. God's beloved people. Let us keep this feast. The body of Christ for you, David. Amen. Thank you. Christ broken for you. and a cup of life for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. It is good to share the bread and meal together. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for this bountiful feast. Our hunger and thirst are satisfied. Our fears are sage, and our bodies and spirit renewed. May your guiding presence, O oh God, ever be the light for the long journey forward. To know, O oh Lord, that you lead us to challenge systems of injustice. May we walk with your presence and the strength, and may we walk with assurance of faith. And this we ask and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
part of this body of Christ, receive these words of blessing. With every step you take, this blessing rises up to meet you. It has been waiting long ages for you. Look close and you can see the layers of it, how it has been fashioned by those who walked this road before you. How it has been created of nothing but their determination and their dreaming. How it has taken its form from an ancient hope that drew them forward and made a way for them when no one could be seen. Look closer and you will see this blessing is not finished. That you are part of the path it is preparing that you are how this blessing means to be a voice within the wilderness and a welcome for the way. Friends, may you go out into this season of uncertainty, continuing to stay open and tender, learning and unlearning. And may the blessings of God, your creator and your redeemer and your sustainer be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Text, email, Instagram message, phone call, the peace of Christ with one another. Sure. 